So we know by now the formula for the dot product of two vectors u and v in space. Um, but what's a little bit unclear sometimes directly is the application of the dot product to say physics and even mathematics. Uh, so what we want to try to understand is what does this actually mean geometrically. Um, so if I have a vector u here and a vector v, Uh, I want to geometric. I want to geometrically understand what the dot product of u and v actually is. Um, well, geometrically, we want to use this formula because this formula is the one with the geometry in it, not this one. So this is what we're trying to interpret. Um, so the magnitude of u—that's pretty straightforward. That's just this guy over here, uh, the length of that vector. Um, so what, what exactly is this part? magnitude of v cosine of theta. Well, this is theta. And all we have to do is use a little trick. Because if we drop a perpendicular from v onto u, we, we want to see what magnitude of v times cosine of theta is. Well, remember that the cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse point. So Katoa, I, I still use that. Um, so what's the adjacent to uh, to theta? Well, that's this over here. And what is the hypotenuse? Well, that's that's v. That's that's how we constructed the the triangle, so that v ended up being the hypotenuse. Um, so what we get here is that h, which is uh, so a, which is uh, magnitude of a over h is a over magnitude of b. Um, so, so what we get then is that the adjacent part is the magnitude of b cosine theta. So, in other words, what b cosine theta is is just the component. Uh, it, it's a, the magnitude of the component of v that is parallel to u. Uh, the similar a similar thing can be done in the reverse if we had just reverse the multiplication here so that it was magnitude of v times magnitude of u cosine theta, but it would be the same thing because what you would get is dropping the perpendicular onto v from u. Uh, we call this the scalar projection, by the way. Uh, we call them, um, yeah, so v cosine theta. The scalar projection of u So that's what it does. So so the dot product, you, you pick your vector, you figure out its magnitude, and you multiply by the other the component of the of magnitude of the component of the other vector that is parallel to it. Now this shows up in physics all the time. Uh, as an example, I'll uh, erase here. As a good example, that that comes up a lot. Work. Work is defined to be force dotted with the distance moved. Uh, so if I if I am pushing a let's see. So yeah, so if I exert a force on an object in this direction and it only moves this far um, then essentially what happens is uh, that the work done on the object is just 
the user formula. the magnitude of the force times the amount of distance that the object moved parallel to the force. So just, just because it moved in some direction doesn't mean that that has anything to do with the amount of energy that was used. Because here's the thing, is that work is a form of energy. And energy is conserved. So, so that this has to happen. That this, this has to happen in order for this to work. But work. Um, so the idea is that the, the, the only thing that actually matters in terms of energy is the amount that the object actually moves parallel to the force. If it moves some, some amount that is not parallel to the force, then, that, then, then you've done, you haven't done work on the object in that direction. That hasn't, that hasn't actually mattered. Um, so this comes up a lot. And throughout the semester, we'll see some more applications to dot product. M most of the time with projection, because dot product is very, very good with pro projection by nature, by geometric nature. Thank you.